Boa tarde, é, bem-vindos à nossa apresentação de hoje. Hoje nós vamos falar sobre Finding the Right Fit com a St. John's University. Aqui conosco nós temos é, Paul. Paul, ele é representante de admissão do, do escritório de admissões né, da Universidade de São Paulo, São, São Jones, <risos> é, é, e ele hoje vai nos ajudar aqui com essas informações a respeito de como encontrar a universidade mais apropriada para o nosso, nosso objetivo. Uh, eu espero que seja uma apresentação que vocês gostem, que vocês aproveitem, e lembrando que o Education USA está à disposição para qualquer esclarecimento ou informação, eu vou deixar aqui também o contato do Education USA no nosso chat, e posteriormente esse vídeo ele vai ser disponibilizado também no nosso canal do YouTube, no Education USA Brasil, e lá ficará para também futura referência. Okay? Muito obrigado a todos por estarem aqui, e uma ótima apresentação a todos. Paul, if you want to introduce yourself a little bit better than I did, <laughs> the floor is yours now. Uh, and thank you for doing this. Thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be able to share with you a little bit about what I've learned um, in my career about how students find the perfect university. So that will be today's topic. Um, and it is in honor of uh, Uh, International Education Week. Uh, so that is this week. So I think it is a perfect week to uh, share this type of information with you. Um, a little bit about me. I'm Paul Muccheroni. I uh, have worked for St. John's University for about five years. Um, I used to work for our business school and uh, in New York. And uh, I recently Well, not recently, two years ago, I trans, uh, transitioned into uh, admissions and recruitment for all of Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm being completely honest, my uh, favorite country to personally visit is Brazil. Uh, and I was completely, yes, I was, but I was completely um, saddened that uh, I was supposed to go on a very, big trip into Brazil at the end of March, which obviously got canceled. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to, to go back and I have faith that that will happen um, next year. So um, I'm going to share my screen here, good. Uh, and so as you can see, the name of the presentation is Realizing Success and Maximizing Your Potential in Higher Education. So really I want, I'm trying to show you, number one, tips on how to be successful in, at university and um, you know, just how to make the most of it, how to maximize uh, what you can do during your four years. And it really comes down to uh, making a good decision about which university that you attend. Um, so look at this, okay, this is a very, um, popular research study that is always talked about. Um, and it shows various levels of education and um, how much money the typical person can earn in over the course of their lifetime. So as you can see, somebody who has completed high school, uh, the researchers at the United States Department of Education have shown that they can expect to make about one $1.3 million dollars over the course of a lifetime. Somebody who had some college, right? College, university. It's the, we use the two words uh, as the same. So sometimes I say college, sometimes university. So workers with some college, uh, but, but didn't finish, can expect to make a little more, 1.5 million. Someone with an associate's degree, associate's degree, that's a two-year degree in the United States, can expect to earn 1.7 million. And you get the idea, someone with a bachelor's degree, that's a four-year degree, um, can expect 2.3 million. And then a master's degree, you know, uh, for, uh, uh, can expect 3.3 million, excuse me, 2.7 million, and a doctoral degree uh, even more. The point is, um, is that education is an investment and uh, generally speaking, people do make more money over the course of their lifetime when they have, uh, when they have that education. 
so, but is it all about money? Uh, is money our only motivation for uh, earning a university degree? It certainly shouldn't be. Um, there are so many other reasons that you would want to, that you would be motivated to apply to a, uh, a college, either anywhere in the world that, um, you know, first it's about, it's about opportunities, career opportunities, your job, right? So, um, you know, earning that degree, of course, has a direct effect on the type of job that you do. Um, you're more valuable to employers because of the skills that you gain in college, right? When you do your job, you have a very specialized skill set. Um, it can be anything from something very technical like computer programming, or it could be just simply the fact that you've been through uh, a university program and that you have the ability to, uh, to show critical thinking skills and to make uh, sound logical decisions. And really that uh, skill came to you while you were in university. So, um, you know, having a degree from a university makes you more valuable to your employer. Um, you will enjoy uh, the work that you're doing, uh, of course, right? You're more likely to enjoy the job that you have, and um, you're more likely to have a higher level of job security. Job security means that, you know, you um, have the ability to keep that job uh, for longer and build uh, over the course of the lifetime, right? So your first job will lead to a promotion, which will lead into your second job and your third job into your a director position, into more leadership positions. So um, the typical person who has a university degree over the course of, the li of their lifetime um, builds and takes on more, and more responsibility. Uh, and and that's, that's a wonderful thing. Um, a network of friends, right? So it's a great motivation to, to go to a university. You are going to build a network of friends and acquaintances that you will carry with you uh, through a lifetime. And that might mean uh, people you will rely on because that for your whole life that you will keep in contact with your, for your whole life. But it also means um, a network of friends um, that will help you uh, throughout the course of your lifetime. People that you would have not met otherwise. Uh, had you not gone to a university. Um, and so, um, and, and, and another thing is just that, you know, as when you have a university degree, you are more of a, an asset, uh, you are useful to your family, you have, um, uh, you know, you're, you have a, a secure job, uh, making money, and you can take care of your family. And that's, that's another, uh, you know, kind of a, a future uh, benefit that that people often don't think about. Um, so it's all about happiness, really. Like so, everything I've been talking about. So I talked about money, right, and that's definitely a motivation. But the other one is just about security and happiness, and and that is uh, what higher education is all about. So you should be very uh, motivated to to apply uh, to a university. But there are so many considerations, right? You have to consider, think about um, so many factors when you're deciding if, um, if, if anything, if, if you're going to choose a university in Brazil, if you're going to choose a university in the United States or elsewhere. Um, let's talk a little bit more about, specifically about what types of options there are in the United States. Um, first of all, there are two general categories for universities in the United States, public and private, right? So that, you know, you, you understand what that means. Like public, a public, we, a public university in the United States is usually um, tied to the state in which it's in. Um, public universities tend to be a little bit larger. Um, some, a lot of them are very uh, focused on research and just have a lot of different options for uh, what you can study there. Private institutions obviously are not uh, funded by the state. So they are um, independent private institutions, private universities. Um, and again, it's general, but maybe they tend, they could tend to be a little bit smaller, or maybe uh, it's a, a large private university that has small classes. 
Um, you know, maybe they have more resources. Um, so one is not better than the other, but you should be aware of the difference between public and private. Um, what two-year versus four-year? Uh, we Sometimes we don't talk about two-year universities um, a whole lot. They're called community colleges. Community colleges uh, typically grant associate's degrees. The, remember, the associate degree is the two-year uh, degree. The idea, if uh, it's becoming a little bit more and more of a trend, more and more popular for uh, students from other countries to go to the United States to these two-year community colleges. The idea is that uh, you could earn an associate's degree and then uh, with the intention of transferring to do your last two years at a, four, a larger four-year uh, university. So uh, that's something to consider. Oftentimes, uh, community colleges are uh, a little bit less money, uh, a better, so a better value, um, and, and maybe uh, just a good way to get started in those first two years and then make the decision about where you'll finish the bachelor's degree a little bit later. Um, but the vast majority, the majority of students uh, from Brazil from, uh, who are going to uh, get an undergraduate degree, a bachelor's degree, will go directly into apply to a four-year college. And they will do all four years at the same uh, college university. You have to consider the cost of attendance, right? Um, sometimes even, okay, let me say it this way. Universities are expensive in the United States. Uh, and sometimes when you see the price per year, the tuition uh, per year, it's shocking. Um, but something that um, is part of the formula of, of that price is financial aid. And I'm going to talk um, a lot in a lot more detail about that, but it's something to consider. You may apply to one place that has a, um, an expensive price and is not offering scholarships. You may apply to somewhere else that um, might have a lower price and, are, and they're offering you um, a fantastic financial aid package. So it's a, it's a big consideration because this uh, is a big investment for you. So I'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, the size of the institution. Uh, I, I always love to point out that um, some people think that a university with 50,000 students is better than a university with 2,000 students. And that is not correct. That is um, the size of the institution uh, is a factor that you should consider, but um, uh, there are so many great colleges, um, or sometimes they're called universities in the United States, um, that are pretty small. Uh, and they may offer something a little different. Uh, and you need to discover what that is in a small university. It could be um, uh, a curriculum, like a group of classes that are just a really dynamic mix of different subjects. It could be um, professors that have an average class size of 10 students and maybe that's like very appealing to you. So there is a lot of value in small, uh, usually in the United States, we call them liberal arts colleges uh, and you should consider small institutions as well. They can, they can provide a very special experience. Um, but there's something to be said about going to a very large institution, like a, a state university, uh, Ohio State University, I think of with, uh, with their over 50, uh, 50 almost 60,000 students. Um, and that, you know, that's just more of a, um, uh, that's just a completely different experience, right? So uh, think about the size that, that appeals to you the most. Um, distance from home. This is an interesting, uh, this is an interesting uh, factor to consider because it sounds silly, right? Distance from, distance from Brazil, everything is far away. But if you choose a, um, a university in New York, uh, Miami, uh, uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, one of the major cities, well, then, you know, that makes a little, it makes not the distance, but the, the, uh, the ease of traveling to the campus 
um, just a, a little bit less of a hassle. If you choose a, if you choose a university that might be in a smaller, uh, more rural area of the United States, um, the journey to get from where you are in Brazil to that university could be 48 hours of traveling and, and connecting, uh, connecting flights and transferring and driving. And uh, so it's, uh, it's something to consider if, it, if, if, if you feel like um, you want to come home more often, um, then it might be worth it for you to consider a larger city in the United States that might have direct flights. Um, extracurricular life. Right? What does extracurricular mean? It means outside of the classroom, right? Um, every university in the United States offers a huge variety of possibilities for you to get involved outside of just your actual classes. Um, so this can be anything from sports, um, either either formal like playing on the on the official team or like club sports sports, which is more just for enjoyment. Fraternities and sororities um, are a very popular uh, way to uh, kind of join a club, make friends, um, uh, have fun together. But um, typically, uh, sororities and fraternities also engage in a lot of um, really great community work and volunteer projects. So um, there are lots of extracurricular options and, and it's something that you should be looking for when you're, when you're, when you're searching for the perfect university. Um, support services, right? I'm going to talk to you more about this, but every university offers a ton of support, lots of support. So uh, that can be from academic advice, uh, career advice and career coaching. Um, and it can be counseling. Uh, so it, it can be just um, having um, academic tutors. Um, and so I'm going to talk more about that in a, in a couple of minutes. Uh, and, uh, and then there are just tons of other factors, lots of other factors. So study abroad, internship, um, you, you know, you name it. It's a uh, lot to think about. Um, so when you've done your research and you've really asked yourself, you, you have to examine um, every place that you want to apply to, you really should examine it, right? Say what size, what is the, what do they have to offer? Does it appeal to me? Do they have what I want to say? Make that list of colleges and universities that you want to, that you want to apply to. Um, typically, uh, students apply to multiple universities um, uh, or uh, you know the average the average applicant applies to um, five or more universities um, it's with with our it's 2020 so with our modern technology it's easier uh, and easier to apply to multiple universities especially because most universities not most but a lot of universities in the United States um, accept something called the common app uh, which is, just uh, really allows you to apply to uh, many universities at the same time without uh, filling in a new application each time. It really is an efficient way to apply to multiple uh, places. Um, get familiar with the deadlines, right? We, um, we all have some sort of deadlines and typical language for deadlines are early decision, early action, regular decision. Um, and it's, it's sometimes it's, you know, people don't know what that means. So I'm going to tell you early decision uh, typically is a deadline that is early. It could be around now. Uh, it could be December 1st or, you know, um, uh, November 20th. Um, and that is a perfect, the early decision deadline is it's a little rare, but it's perfect for somebody who is only who is going to apply to that university and is willing to commit, uh, like sign a binding agreement that they will attend that university. Um, so er, the, doing the early decision deadline is perfect for uh, somebody who is applying to the dream university, the one they want, and they absolutely know they will um, sign that, that agreement and go to that university. Early action, on the other hand, um, very similar, um, but it's 
it's simply a deadline that usually is around now, uh, December 1st, late November. And it just means uh, you finish your application and they will give you a uh, decision you know, usually within a few weeks, sometimes uh, in the first half of January. So it's a great way to, to get it finished and find out and get ready to start uh, in the fall semester, which is usually late August, early September. And then regular decision could be another deadline that's somewhere uh, between January and, and May um, that each university uh, puts. Uh, some universities have rolling decision. I should have put that down, rolling a decision. And that means there is no deadline uh, that you can apply uh, at any point in the year for the next semester coming up. Um, and so um, aside from that, you have to know transcripts, uh, what standardized tests uh, or exams that they require, any essays uh, that you have to write. Uh, everything should be clearly on the, on the website. But I can tell you from experience that every university in the United States is willing to accept your questions. So if you um, are applying somewhere and the requirements are unclear about transcripts, essay, letters of recommendation, something doesn't make sense, ask questions uh, because uh, we're always happy to answer those questions. Uh, usually by email, you can make a phone call. Um, even uh, many universities are now having uh, uh, live chats um so and then and then of course scholarships uh to research the scholarships find out what uh the universities typically offer and again i tell you ask questions ask questions about scholarships uh because they're always uh happy to answer those questions and um and just remember that the more research you do the better you're going to feel so um there's no uh there's no over researching, there's <laughs> no such thing. So, so uh, really get uh, gather all of the information that you can. Um, so, how do we make the most? So, so you apply and you make your choice. How do you how 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 do you find happiness? How do you find satisfaction? How do you make the most of your college experience? Um, so. You know, uh, I want to talk to you about majors, right? Majors. It's it's what you choose to study. We always call it majors, and um, there are a lot of choices out there for majors. So choose a major that you love and enjoy, really. Um, but I also want to add that one of my favorite parts about the higher education system in the United States is that you don't have to decide from the very beginning. You don't have to declare what major you want when you're applying. It's okay to, in almost every university, it's okay to apply as undecided. Um, and that's the beauty of freshman year, your first year. Uh, you can explore different classes and uh, make the decision, usually at the end of the first year or the beginning of the second year, finally about what you want to study. So it could be choosing a university that has the one major that you want, or if you are undecided, choose a university that might have five majors that are possibilities. Uh, and that's, that will ensure that, uh, that you're not at a university and you realize they don't have engineering and you want to be an engineer. No. So if you think you want to be an engineer, choose a university that at least has that as a possibility. Um, in the United States, get to know your faculty members. Faculty members are your professors. Um, professors are very uh, generally, not everyone, but generally professors are very open to knowing their students, to, um, to really helping students. And um, most professors have office hours. Uh, so they want to uh, hear students, meet, uh, meet with students, um, listen if you have a problem or need clarification about something that was in class. It's worth getting to know your faculty members. It's easy to stay quiet and not ever make yourself introduce yourself or be um, uh, or get to know your professor, but it's worth it, I'm telling you. Um, and um, also really try to understand what those professors expect from you. 
Uh, and that's, um, I, that can be done by getting to know them. Uh, time management skills, right? So it's very overwhelming to be at a, United, at a university in the United States, especially at the beginning. And it's very easy to become overwhelmed with everything, tests, projects, papers, <laughs> lots of papers. Uh, you'll be writing uh, research, uh, research papers, essays, this, that. So um, it really, and, and projects, individual projects, group projects, presentations. Um, and when you're taking five or six uh, classes, it can become overwhelming. So um, if you go into university knowing that you need to really practice good time management skills um, and not letting things start to fall behind, it's you're going to be at an advantage. But what goes with that is that what happens if you do get overwhelmed? The next uh, number five says, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, at universities in the United States, I, I said there are support services, um, lots of support services in almost every university. This is academic support services. That might be um, a, look for a writing center Univer lots of universities have writing centers. That's a place where you can bring um, an assignment that you've written and they will give you advice on how to make it perfect or how to improve it. Um, and so this is tremendously helpful for, uh, for someone, especially if English is not your first language. Uh, so uh, look for writing centers, tutors in um, uh, you know, math and science are typically the, uh, the big ones, but um, a lot of universities um, offer uh, free, free uh, yeah, most of the time it's free tutoring. Uh, so that's one-on-one -on -one help uh, if you feel like you're falling behind in a class. Um, so lots of, lots of academic support services um, usually at universities, but it's worth um, asking that question when you are uh, it's still in the process of deciding which universities to, to apply to. Um, ask yourself about like what uh, academic support services that they offer. Um, think about internships, right? So um, in addition to academic support, uh, many universities offer career support, job, um, like I wanna call it, yeah, career coaching. Right, so this is helping you to um, uh, this is helping you to develop uh, a vision for yourself about exactly what type of job that you want. Um, help with how to um, how how to get your resume started. That can be difficult, and so they typically help with that. They may help you with interview skills. Right, so it's uh, they you know typically these support services for careers they will help you uh, to get used to answering questions and going into job interviews and then above everything else they uh, typically will help you to find an internship uh, so they uh, will have great resources so that uh, you can maybe do an internship. Um, an internship is a job, uh, uh, like a, a short three month, usually job experience. Um, like for example, if you're a business major, a finance major, uh, for example, uh, and you're studying finance, you might in your, in your third or fourth year, you might want to do an internship at an investment bank. Um, and so that career department is gonna help you get ready for to find that perfect uh, short, job experience. Uh, and and it, it's really like the first step in building your experience so that when, when you graduate, you have something to show. Uh, so take advantage of that uh, for sure. Um, number seven, study abroad if you can. Study abroad. That means uh, these are programs that are extremely popular uh, among American students. Um, but are available to uh, international students studying at American universities. And it simply means for one week, one semester, or one year, um, making a plan to study in another country. Um, most universities have uh, campuses in other countries or partner universities. Uh, and so really think about if you'd like to internationalize your education, that uh, the university you're applying to has those study abroad opportunities available. Um, 
And finally, number eight, it is never too early to think about the, a master's degree. Um, so if uh, many times uh, certain majors that you choose um, are re not required, but benefit from uh, moving forward and getting a master's degree. So um, there's, um, there's nothing wrong with thinking about the master's degree um, at a very early part of your um, of your bachelor's degree education. Um, and then, so, so that's the classroom, right? But the university experience is so much more than, than, a cla than, than taking classes. It's also a social, um, ex uh, it's also a personal and social experience. Um, so um, another support service that uh, many universities have it are um, uh, like, counseling services. So number one, don't be afraid to ask for help when you need uh, support personally. Um, you know, many students find, uh, can suffer from homesickness, right? They miss home, you know, they're, uh, they want to, maybe they want to go home, they feel a certain sadness, um, or many feel overwhelmed, or many feel like that they're not um, getting uh, the most out of their experience. And so if like the best thing you can do to, um, to combat that is to talk about it, right? So most universities do offer some sort of counseling therapy uh, services and, and there's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to take advantage of if you're feeling like you need to talk. Um, and number two, be open to making friends, right? That some, some people it comes naturally some people it's not so natural to make friends and they have to make an effort to to do that and so it's a it's it's a good piece of advice to say make make friends try to do it uh, be open to meeting people um number three uh choose extracurricular activities join an academic club Joint, consider joining a fraternity or sorority or an independent volunteer group um, or some other, there's just, there's so many. I mean, I know where I work, there are 180 different extracurricular clubs. So it really is, there's a wide range and there's something for everyone and don't be afraid to get involved. Um, so, um, and so that's what it's all about. Number four is just knowing, understanding everything that's available to you. Uh, academic support, uh, emotional support and uh, extracurricular activities. And number five, I think is important, don't be afraid to uh, take on leadership roles, especially, you know, it's a four year experience. So maybe in the uh, third and fourth year to, uh, if you've been a member of a certain academic club, why not become a leader uh, of that club? Why not take on more of a, um, of a, a larger responsibility. It's personally fulfilling uh, and getting outside of your comfort zone is, you know, like exactly what creates self-satisfaction. Um, then I want to talk about finance, financially, right? Uh, and I'm going to give you a little bit of um, advice on what all these terms mean. Uh, for for the financial aid that's typically available to uh, international students um, at American um, yeah at American universities many offer international students merit based scholarships so the or you could say academic based scholarships those are scholarships that are offered typically based on any exams that you take uh, as part of your application or your grades that you had in school. Um, so those scholarships, um, usually do, you do not need to fill out an extra application, but they, those scholarships are offered to you um, at the time that they, that they give you the acceptance letter. Um, and so those are, those are merit-based scholarships or academic scholarships. Um, number two, Application scholarships, what is that? Those are, that's the term we use for other scholarships, right? So other scholarship programs that are offered by the university um, that, you, uh, that you do have to apply for, like fill out a separate application, maybe uh, most usually write an essay 
Um, and it could be, um, it can be anything you can imagine. Um, a typical application scholarship might be um, a, uh, uh, like a service learning scholarship. So it's a, a group of scholars, a group of students uh, who are selected um, and they're given a scholarship, let's say $10,000 per year, but they're also a, they're kind of a, a group of students who do work in the community or do volunteer work. Um, another, another might be, you know, these scholarships can be, can be any size, shape, form, um, but most universities have them. And so it's, it's really, um, a good idea to try to research that uh, if you're if you're really looking to um, maximize your scholarships. And the good thing is is that most uh, universities will allow you to have merit based scholarships, um, and then stack on top of that a different scholarship, an, an application scholarship, for example. Um, and so having multiple scholarships is just makes the uh, the the financial aid package bigger. Number three need-based financial aid. What is that? So it's, I, I consider that almost the opposite of number one, merit-based. Merit-based, need-based. Some universities um, give scholarships based on your financial situation. Um, so in other words, so some, they, they, their aim is to provide more scholarship funding to a student who has more financial need. And the way that most universities in the United States determine uh, your financial situation is through uh, something called CSS profile. Uh, the CSS profile is basically it's an it's an application that um, through its questions and the information that it asks for paints a picture of you and your family's financial situation so that the university can then offer you a scholarship that directly uh, complements your family's financial situation. I hope, I, I hope that didn't sound too uh, complicated. Uh, so basically it's an extra application to fill out. Not every, I would, not every university um, does need-based financial aid for, uh, for international students. So, um, many universities only do number one academic or and number two application scholarships. So really um, look out for that when you're researching how to finance and see if the university also uh, gives out need-based scholarships and will expect you to fill out this CSS profile or the financial application. Um, number four, external scholarships. That can be anything. I, all that means is there's scholarships that are simply not connected to the university at all, but that the university will accept. Um, and, and really, uh, external scholarships are something that uh, you can potentially research on your own. Um, and finally, number five, I always like to mention that most universities um, most universities expect you to pay uh, the money that you that you owe at the beginning of each semester, not each year, but each semester. Um, but many universities really help with to manage the cost through payment plans, and um, will allow you to break up a uh, a semester into maybe five or between three and five uh, smaller payments. You know. Some people don't think about that, but that could um, that could help sway your decision at the end. So uh, what we see here are basically it's everything I've been talking to you about broken down into five categories. And where did I find this? But on um, an Education USA Instagram account, uh, specifically this one happens to be from Education USA Columbia. Uh, Instagram account. So what are the five considerations? I've talked about them all. Size of the institution, uh, the activities that they offer, majors, so what you can study, um, uh, the geography, where it's located, and the cost. So um, then I was researching and I found that, yeah, this exact same Instagram post is actually um, on Education USA Brasilia's um, Instagram account, but in Portuguese. And I have been taking Portuguese lessons since March. So I was very excited to see 
Um, I didn't know how to say major, so now I know it's curso. Uh, so those are your five considerations. So here's an activity. Let's uh, talk, uh, let's take an example university uh, and, and talk very briefly about that, about this example of a university and see how these five categories fit in. Um, which university are we gonna talk about? How about this one? Because I happen to know a lot about it. Uh, so that would be that would be the best thing. So consider consider St. John's, but let's also consider those five uh, those five factors that I found on that Instagram. Um, so St. John's University, that's where I work. Uh, it's located in New York, so it's definitely an urban uh, university, but it's not located in the center of New York, like. Uh, Manhattan. It's located in Queens, New York. So it's still in New York City, but it's in an area that is a little bit more, uh, has a more traditional university uh, environment. Uh, you know, grass, trees, buildings, New York. But um, uh, the geography uh, is so important when you consider where uh, you want to go to university. So does living in New York appeal to you? Can you envision yourself uh, really embracing um, the, the opportunities that New York has to offer? So it's St. John's University. We're the second largest Catholic university in the country, uh, founded by the Order of St. Vincent. So it's a Vincentian university, meaning that we love to um, offer lots of opportunities to our students to do good volunteer work and make a difference in the community. And that's kind of like our, um, our, our good values. Uh, metropolitan, meaning that we're in an urban area. We're in New York. I love New York, I, it, there's so many great opportunities and we're a global university. So um, we actually, St. John's University has campuses in Paris and uh, Rome. So it's, uh, we, we consider ourselves to be a global uh, school. So majors, curso, curso, curso. Uh, so what majors do we offer? Um, like I said, just like anywhere, most other universities in the United States, you don't have to know what you want to study right from the very beginning. You can make the decision in the first year or at the beginning of the second year. But we offer over 100 different majors, um, everything from science, um, business, education, um, and just a lot of other areas, psychology, public relations, uh, sports management. I'm really seriously just naming random majors, but there's over a hundred of them. But that's a, that's a good idea. That's an excellent option for somebody who is undecided because you have a lot to choose from once you make your decision. Um, right, activities, right? So I, like I mentioned, we have a, over 180 organizations on campus that are, um, that are student centered. Uh, so that can be, that's everything from fraternities and sororities and academic clubs and sports clubs. Um, so St. John's University has quite a large, and then like uh, has a large amount of activities to choose from. Um, and then let's also talk about tamanho. Uh, the size. St. John's University happens to be a large university, right? So uh, over 16,000 undergraduate students. Um, so that, you know, that idea might appeal to you as well. It's a large university and for that reason has over 100 majors and really a lot of um, activities to choose from. Um, more about activities. Um, I said study abroad if you can, right? So St. John's University has a lot of study abroad opportunities, partner universities all over the world, um, short seven day study abroad programs at our Rome or Paris campus, um, and, uh, and a really dynamic program called Discover Western Europe. Um, it's where it's over 600 of our students per year participate in this program. So one semester, you will, you will be in Ireland, uh, uh, yeah, Limerick, Ireland, uh, Paris, France, and Rome, Italy. Five weeks, five weeks, five weeks. So what a great way to see uh, Western Europe in, in one semester and take classes toward your degree. Um, I mentioned career services, so that's really important. And at St. John's University, um, just have, being in New York, being a large university, uh, we have a lot of connections <clears throat> and we're able to get 
um, our students, um, you know, into, we, we help our students get into those work experiences that can be so valuable. Whether you are majoring in law, government, business, science, um, chances are, uh, you know, you're in New York City and uh, our career services department really helps students to find perfect companies to, uh, to, to spend that average of three months uh, doing, getting that work experience. Finally, custo, <laughs> cost, right? So um, the, uh, uh, the, like I said, universities all have a tuition, right? So in, um, in St. John's University, it's about a little bit more than $42,000 per year. So uh, then you have to say, well, what do what what's your scholarship program like what is the what what types of scholarships does the average international applicant get and we have um if you remember my explanation about scholarships we have merit-based scholarships so it's academic scholarships and application scholarships we do not uh, our university does not uh give financial uh based scholarships. So, um, but the academic scholarships are very generous. Um, they're mostly based on your grades in school. And, um, and once again, no application required. And we give you the value of the scholarship at the, um, at the point where you receive the um, acceptance letter. Um, but other scholarship programs exist. Um, Azanam Scholars Program is the, my favorite one to talk about. It's, um, I, I kind of described it before, it's worth $10,000 per year. And uh, it's a group of students who do um, really awesome volunteer work in the community and, uh, and, 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 and projects that help to build uh, communities, both in New York and in other places. So really, that's the point. Just research uh, every university's typical scholarship package that international students have, um, have access to. So you saw, so you saw all five categories applied to St. John's University. And this is a great example of really um, how to take a really close look at any university that you're considering um, and, and to really look at those five, five factors. So, that is, I talked for a long time and um, I forgot to mention at the beginning, I, my favorite part of any, of any presentation that I do is taking questions. <laughs> so I hope that there are a couple of questions and uh, just know that I'm happy to answer. Also my, uh, my name and that is the email address that I check every day. Um, if you have uh, any questions that you want to ask to me directly, uh, feel free to take my email down. Well, thank you for this, such amazing presentation, really. It was a, a, a full um, guidance throughout whatever you guys need to pay attention and to be aware of during the process of finding and thinking and considering studying in the United States and searching for a university for you to attend. Uh, we do have some questions. Oh, we can good. go through them uh, right now. I have some questions of my own that I usually like to ask, but before we can get to that, I'll go through the questions that the students actually sent. Um, so from Lucas Sassin, we do have a question regarding the financial aspect which goes, uh, what does it mean to be need aware or need blind institution? That's okay. I'm, I love that question because um, it's the same thing I've been talking about, but we use so many different terms. So it's the difference between uh, a, a, a university that only offers academic merit scholarships and one that offers um, only financial based scholarships. So need blind, blind means you're not looking, not looking at the need, means that I'm only looking at your academics. Um, so a need blind, yeah, that's basically that, that you're, you're looking at that, that you're only looking at academics. Good question. Yeah, exactly. Usually I, I also say that it's, it's regarding to the admission process usually, right? Um, when the, the university is not uh, concerned with the, the financial uh, ability of paying for a university to decide if the student is going to be admitted. Is that right? 
That's 100% correct, right? Okay. So they're only look they're not looking at uh, they're only looking strictly at, at academics, your application uh, at your academics exactly your your readiness to start a program. Yeah, usually I say if you if you are good enough to attend this institution, then you will you will be attending that institution, because usually they are neither blind and they aren't uh, concerned with that, and because they usually can pay for the students to, to attend the university. Oh, there, there we, we have uh, Guilherme joining us. Thank you, Guilherme, for being here as well. Guilherme is another one of the advisors here in, in Education SA Brasilia. I actually work with him. <laughs> so thank you for being here as well, Guilherme. Uh, we do have another question. Let me see from Juliana, who's asking, where can I find external scholarships? Do you have any tips uh, for that? I, so I, yes and no, I have tips for that. I, um, I was considering um, putting, a, giving some resources on that, but um, basically, I mean, an external scholarship is, can be anywhere. <laughs> That's the problem. It's like, there's no like one, one or two or three resources that I can give you um, that would, um, that would provide you with that. But, um, when I when I was researching it, truly, if you Google external scholarships, and you're aware of like good, true, legitimate organizations that might um, offer these external scholarships, uh, I think you'll I think you'll find that there are some that uh, that you can apply to. Um, so, and I know I just said huge general, get Google it is not a nice answer, but um, I, I really mean that sincerely. Um, you'd be surprised what you'll come up with when you, when you start to research and, uh, and see what is out there. Um, many uh, scholarship webs, there are many websites that like consolidate scholarships, right? And some of them, watch out, some of them are only for uh, American students, but when I did the research um, on external scholarships, I found so many that had a separate section of, okay, these scholarships are also open to international students. Um, and I was really happy to, to, happy to see that. Um, and I think that the biggest secret about scholarships that I've noticed in my lifetime <laughs> uh, of working in scholarship programs is that, um, you would think more people would apply and they don't. So be that person, apply, <laughs> do the research. Um, and, and if it looks like a good opportunity and a legitimate opportunity, and if they ask you to write um, a, a, an essay and provide some information, do it. Because a lot of times the scholarships feel like, oh, I'm never gonna get it. There's so much competition. But the, the organization that is offering the scholarship might uh, not be receiving so many applications. So don't, don't be intimidated, <laughs> just go for it. Exactly, I would say the same thing, especially yeah. because at some point the scholarships that these institutions provide, they are usually smaller scholarships, like $500, $1,000. And, and many students think that doesn't worth it, the, the, the trouble that they will have applying. Uh, but then if you get like five or six of, of these smaller scholarships, then you have a, a substantial amount of money. That can that's also actually a good point. Yeah, and, and, and that's a really good point too. Sometimes the dollar amount of the scholarship is like a thousand, five hundred, two thousand. But um, yeah, if you're, if you're a go-getter, right? Like somebody who's very like, who will do it and, and apply to multiple scholarships, then, you know, uh, 2,000 plus 2,000 is 4,000. <laughs> so exactly. it's like, right? They, it can really add up. So that's good exactly. advice. Uh, I did share the, on the chat function uh, the link for Education USA, that state of Gov website. And over there, you can find some more information on uh, how to deal with financial uh, aid, financial planning. And there are also some general links for funding. And I would also recommend you to check, always, always check the university's website because usually they might uh, have some, some links over there like suggestions from sure. where you can go and, and look for extra uh, assistance on that financial uh, matter. 
Uh, well, well, I have some questions for, of my own. <laughs> I would like to share. Uh, you did mention early applications. Uh, in which circumstances would you think or it would be better for a student to apply early than apply regular? You know, I think early, they, um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the early action deadline. Almost every university uses that term, early action deadline. And the great advantage is, um, you know, let's say you don't have one dream university, but you have five that you think are gonna be good. Um, it's a really good way to apply to all five, um, have this and have a very similar deadline. And then, and then you get your um, admission decisions more or less at the same time. Like, you know, in a two week period though, like you'll get the emails um, with maybe with what I hope are acceptance letters. Um, and then on page two of the acceptance letter, what I hope might be a, an offer, a specific offer for a scholarship. So you start to really be able to do a, a, an easy comparison. Um, yeah, and so if you, if you apply after the early decision deadline, then maybe those um, decisions are gonna start coming at different times and it'll be a little more difficult to, to make your final decision. Um, and typically you'll need to make your final decision between um, uh, March and May. Excellent, thank you. Um, <clears throat> regarding the, the services that you said that institutions usually provide to students, uh, do, you, do students have any kind of assistance to choose a major while in college? Do they have some kind of, some time, uh, some kind of uh, counseling or something like that that they can use to, to well, make a best choice for them. Yeah, um, so that's a, and it's, it, there are so many students who start um, the, the, their freshman year as undecided and being undecided means you have to decide. Uh, and, and sometimes that's not easy. Um, at a lot of universities, including St. John's, um, they uh, have a resource called the Freshman Center um, and the Freshman Center is, exists just for that person who needs help. Um, you have an advisor, a specific person who you meet with throughout, the, throughout your first year who's gonna help you to make that decision and talk to you about it and really uh, tell you uh, what programs you have to choose from. Um, after freshman year, you, when, you, when you have finally decided, you go from having that general advisor to an actual um, academic advisor, like a, a person who works in the business school, or um, in some cases, uh, it's a professor who's assigned to be that go-to person to ask for advice. Because the even, even after you've decided which major you want, at most universities, it's not, okay, take X, Y, Z classes. No, it's like, choose from this menu of classes, choose from this area of classes choose from the, so there's just choices um, and sometimes even that can be um, a big process to decide which classes to take to to fulfill your major and make your major uh, so there's no shortage of help and advice uh, when it comes to those issues excellent thank you and one last question that we have here i think at this point um would you say universities can provide CSS profile fee waivers for international students? Because at some point we do receive tons of questions like that because uh, CSS profile says uh, that there is no fee waivers for international students, but some international students says, oh, we do have a university granted us with a, a fee waiver. Is it that possible? And how can students get access to it? Well, um, so there are two fees we could be talking about. The application fee, um, many universities charge an application fee, it can be $25, it could be $75 um, to apply to the university. However, many, many, many universities, it simply do not charge a fee to apply. Um, so the ones that the universities who do charge, you know, maybe whether it's $50 or $70 to apply, um, if it's a truly an obstacle for you to apply there, don't be afraid to at least write an email explaining how much it would help you to be able to apply to that university for free. Um, so I, I mean, I can't guarantee that it'll work, but I can say it might work, <laughs> that they, you might get an email back saying, 
okay, you know, we'll, you know, we have something we can do in our system and we can uh, eliminate the fee, you can apply for free. Um, and then the, with the CSS profile, that also um, has a very specific fee um, that if you're applying to multiple universities that require the CSS profiles, it's the fee gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So by the time you get to three, you're talking almost $100. Um, so again, don't be afraid. You have nothing to lose. Just email the admissions department of the university. Uh, if the, the, the fee to apply for the CSS profile is truly an obstacle, um, they might have fee waiver codes um, that will allow you to fill out that uh, financial profile for free. Never hurts to ask. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul, for joining us today for this valuable tips and for this comprehensive presentation that you uh, gave us today. It was a really, real, real pleasure to be here to, with you today. Thank you. Guilherme? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you, uh, thank you, Jefferson, for uh, for moderating and uh, uh, and organizing this. And thank you, Guilherme. I've been uh, corresponding with you to get this uh, put together. I appreciate everybody's um, help. And I and once again, I of course I uh, uh, I hope that I uh, can come to Brazil in person next year. And hi, Paul. Uh, Oh, hi. Yes, um, there. there you go. Thank you. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to unmute <laughs> my mic. Thank you so much. It was a great presentation, very comprehensive. You touched all the uh, important uh, points that everyone that's interested in choosing an institution in the U.S. should know about. Thank you so much for this. It's really valuable for, for us and the, the community. Thank you. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure. And, um, and yeah, I hope that um, I hope that everybody who watches it um, has a little bit better of an idea of how to find the right university, how to find the perfect fit, and um, and 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 thank you again. I really enjoyed this. We sure will. Thank you, Paul. And this uh, recording and presentation will be made available on our YouTube channel for the Education USA Brazil later on. Thank you so much once again, and have a great a great day, you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.